Okay, we're going to try and prove that the square root of 3 is an, is an irrational number. So we've already proven that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Now we're going to prove that the square root of 3 is an irrational number. It's, good. it's a tricky proof, so you're going to, you might not get it the first time. You're going to have to watch this video a few times um, before you get it. So we're going to have a look at one idea that we're going to use in the proof before we actually get into the proof. And the idea is, is this. So say, let's say A is an integer, A is an element of Z, and B is an integer. And let's say that a is equal to b divided by 3. So whatever number a is, it's the same as b divided by 3. That must mean that um, b must be divisible by 3, because if it wasn't divisible by 3, then a couldn't be an integer. So you're going to have to ha have a look at this a few times until it kind of makes sense to you. So we're saying that a and b are both integers. If a is equal to b divided by 3, b has to be divisible by 3, because say, let's say b wasn't divisible by 3. Well, if it wasn't divisible by 3, so 3 doesn't go into b, then a can't be an integer. Let's say, let's say b was 10. Well, then I guess 10 divided by 3 is 3 and a third, which is, which is not an integer. So b mo if a is equal to b over 3 and a and b are both integers, then b must be divisible by 3. Now, if b is divisible by 3, any, anything that's divisible by 3, say if I take uh, 12, 12 is divisible by 3, and 12 is equal to 3 times 4. So any number that's divisible by 3 means that you can write it as 3 times something. Uh, 21 is divisible by 3, and 21 is equal to 3 times 7. So if b is divisible by 3, then b must equal 3 times c, where c is some integer. So we're going to use this idea in our proof uh, that the square root of 3 is an irrational number. OK, so let's get to the proof. So it's, it's, we're going to start off, it's similar to the uh, proof of root 2. So we're going to use a proof by contradiction. So we're going to start off PBC, just to say we're using a proof by contradiction. And we're going to assume the opposite. So we're going to assume that root 3 is rational. So we assume square root of 3 is rational. Rational just means a fraction. So let's say what we what we mean by that in maths. If if root three is rational, that means I can write it as a fraction. So that means the square root of three is equal to x over y. Then just give the definition of a fraction. What x and y are. So x and y are both integers, and the y part can't be zero. And then we're also going to say that because it's a fraction, like when we did the square root of two proof, um, x and y are both in lowest terms. So I put the fraction in its lowest terms. Okay, so let's now find some kind of a contradiction. So we have root 3 is equal to x over y. That means uh, we could square both sides to get rid of the square root. So square root 3, we get 3 is equal to, and if I square this side, I get x squared over y squared. So I can end up, I can multiply both sides by y squared to get rid of the fraction. So 3y squared is equal to x squared over y squared times y squared, so I have 3y squared is equal to x squared. Or I could rearrange that to get y squared is equal to x squared over 3. Now, if you look at this, what we have here, that's similar to what we had before, what I had, what I showed you before. Remember, if a is equal to b over 3, then this b part, the top part, must be divisible by 3. So, And if it is divisible by 3, we can write it as 3 times something. Okay, so we have y squared is equal to x squared over 3. That means that x must be divisible by 3. And if, it's, if x is divisible by 3, then that means that x is equal to 3 times something. Let's, go, let's call that something, say, c. So x is equal to 3 times c, where we just say what c is. C, well not c is equal to c is an element. C is an integer. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna come up to the other side so I have a bit more room. So if we come back to say so if we come back to this line now, and instead of writing x, well we know that x is equal to three times c. So instead of writing x, we're gonna write three c. So I have three y squared is equal to, and instead of x, I'm going to write three c. So it'll be three c all to be squared because it was x squared. So I have 3y squared is equal to 9c squared. Or I can rearrange that and get y squared is equal to 3c squared. And I can rearrange that to get 
y squared over uh, 3 is equal to c squared. So remember, c is an integer. We have it down here. And now we have that c squared is equal to y squared over 3. So again, that's coming back to this. It looks like this. If a is equal to b over 3, then b must be divisible by 3. And if b is divisible by 3, then b is equal to 3 times something. So I have c squared is equal to y squared over 3. So that must mean that y, therefore y is divisible by 3. But now we have, now we have a contradiction because, can you see what it is? Well, we said that x and y are both in their lowest terms. But now, but they can't be in their lowest terms because x is divisible by 3, y is divisible by 3, so they're not both in their lowest terms. So there's our contradiction. So I'm just going to write that in. So it's a contradiction as x and y not in lowest terms. So now what we assumed must be false. So we assumed that it, root 3 was rational. So that must be false. So the opposite of that must be true. So root 3 must be irrational. So therefore, the square root of 3 is irrational. Q, E, D, because we're finished quantum as demonstratum. We're done. So that's, that's, a, that's a tricky proof. It's not easy. It's probably one of the hardest proofs that you'll see. Um, so you're going to have to watch this video a few times. But when the more you watch us, the more you'll get us.